Hey friends, so I am working on a secret project, although how secret is it, for the librarian at the school I teach at. So she's about to have a baby and her family, they are beekeepers and so I thought how perfect would it be to make a bee kind painting um, that she could hang up in the nursery in the baby's room um, and she is like so uh, almost brave really and is not finding out uh, what the baby is so I don't know if it's a girl or a boy so I'm just gonna kind of paint it neutral I love mustard yellow kind of goes along with the bee theme so it's gonna be a mustard yellow colored background and then I'll use some black and white for the bee and the kind the word kind so um, we are going to get started. I've got a bunch of colors on my plate from a previous project, but really, like I said, all we really need are yellow, black, and white. But, um, did you know to make your yellow darker, you actually can add purple. Purple is yellow's complementary color. So guys, um, grab your paint supplies. Please, please, please watch me to the end so that you can see the end result, right? Um, and let's see, grab your paint supplies, put on comfy clothes, get you a yummy drink and snack. Um, I am working on a full-size canvas, so this will take just a little bit. Um, of course, so you can work on paper, on cardboard, on uh, poster board, whatever you have, you don't have to work on canvas and you can use whatever art supplies you have. Obviously you don't have to use acrylic paints, but if you do remember, they don't wash out of your clothes. Um, and it's hard to get it off surfaces that it doesn't belong on. So you might put something down on the table, but like I was saying just a bit ago, you can actually use purple and I'm going to grab me about a chocolate chip amount because I have a really big chunk of yellow because I knew um, the majority of my picture was going to be yellow, so I grabbed a pretty good chunk size of it. Although it is kind of getting really close to my green and my black, which is not making me happy right now, but that's okay. You know, with art, sometimes you just go with the flow. I'm going to grab a little bit more purple. Mix that in. Mix, 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 mix and um, try to keep your paint in one little pile. Try to keep it from going everywhere. And then I am going to add me a chunk of white into this to just soften it up a little bit so it's not so intense might be the word. Um, now I will say, if you put too much purple in there, you will wind up with brown. Okay, so even though yellow and purple are complementary colors, if we to use too much purple into our yellow, we will get a brownish color. Now, I could also sweep some white straight on my canvas so that I have some softer spots and then I kind of have some more intense spots. So you could always do that too. I think that could be really fun. Um, there we go. Plus, it makes your yellow spread further if we're mixing white into it, right? Now, I know that my sweet librarian watches me sometimes, so I might actually wait to air this until after I give her her gift. The baby is due in the next eight days, so I figure I'll give her this gift and then I'll make my post. That might be the best idea, right guys? If I'm wanting it to be a secret. Okay, so again, I just, I'm not all about nice and smooth. I like a fun textured background, um, but if you want it nice and smooth, what you wanna do is get it on rough, like what I'm doing right now, just get it on there real kind of rough and almost a little bit thick. And then what you can do is you glide your brush all the way from one edge to the other. 
just like that and it smooths it out. And obviously I would probably need to go over it again because I don't think, there it goes, once is quite enough, but you can see the difference between the texture and the smooth. So it's really up to you which one you prefer. Um, and then I think I just said this, but I think maybe I didn't. Um, you know when you say something a bunch of times, you begin to wonder, did I think it or did I say it? <laughs> I'm going to paint my edges. Did I say that already? I don't know. So I'm going to paint the very, very top. And depending on if you're working on an easel or not, you may have to stand up to see. I'm just kind of hoping I got it all covered. And then, oops. First, I'll paint the edge. Now, I personally love this color, but um, somebody I know says that mustard yellow looks like baby poop. So <laughs> you might think that too. So you might prefer just to use the bright yellow from your tuba paint or jar or whatever kind of paint you're using. Um, you can get paints from me. You can actually order them on your website. You can also order brushes or painting kits. Um, I can actually turn this into a drawing for you first. And then, um, and then you can, I can draw it onto your canvas for you ahead of time. Like draw what we're gonna draw here shortly. And then you can order that kit. So I'm not the best salesperson, so I'm trying to be better about throwing in plugs here and there. Now, if your paint gets kind of sticky on you before you can get it all blended how you want to, um, and sticky means that it's starting to dry, what you can do is take your brush, barely dip it in your water, just barely dip it in there, and then you can rub that dampness on your paint where it's getting sticky, and that will... Um, Help loosen it up a little bit so it'll glide for you. Don't know if you knew that trick or not. Now, obviously, the bigger the brush you have for your background, the faster you'll be able to get it painted. I'm just pushing that canvas all over the place, aren't I? Um, the faster you'll be able to get it painted. So, um, you may want to think about using a, a decently big brush in your background and then um, we'll switch to a smaller pointy brush to do our actual detail work. Something to think about using your biggest brush right now. All right, we're getting there. We're closing in on the end. Those of you that don't know, um, I am an elementary art teacher and I have taught in the same district for 14 complete years and will start my 15th in the fall. And um, I also did my student teaching in the same building that I'm actually teaching in now. Um, I was fortunate enough that my mentor teacher decided she kind of wanted a change and she wanted to go up to high school because there was a position open at the high school in our district. And um, I said, yes, I want your job. <laughs> so, and I've been there ever since. And what's kind of cool is I am only the third art teacher to ever teach in my building. And our building has been open for, golly, I don't even know now. I think we're approaching 40 years, maybe? Something like that? I could be totally wrong on that. And I'm sure my fellow teachers can leave me a comment and correct me. Okay, did we, we didn't go down this side over here, did we? Let's just check. No, we didn't. So, we'll just kind of glide some paint on here move all the way down and I'm seeing up close here where I didn't get some spots painted on the front. So if you see any little bitty uh, white polka dotty spots showing, that is um, the texture of the canvas showing through and it's like screaming at you, add more paint. <laughs> and then at some point, don't forget to flip this guy upside down and paint the other side too, okay? 
and honestly I'm feeling the top of mine and it's pretty dry so I can just go ahead and flip it and really there is no up and down right now unless maybe you are doing like an ombre effect so um, I don't think it whoop oh my goodness I promise this easel is going to get me one day. Okay. There we go. The other day it fell off my table and um, landed on my puppy dogs because both of them are right down here sleeping. And since they're pugs, you might hear them snoring in a minute. I wish I could show you, but my camera is mounted and that would be a whole process to show you right now. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit of white up here on this edge just to kind of blend that a little bit better maybe. Blendy blend blend. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Now, um, here's where you need to make a decision. Um, after you inspect it, first you need to inspect it real quick, but uh, dip in your water, rub, 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 and see how it just blends it right in nicely. Not too much water though, or you will mess up your whole painting. But here's where you need to make a decision. Do you want to um, go blow dry this and then, um, come back and draw with a pencil. Would you feel better about that? You know, like if you went and blew, blow dried this so it was really dry and then you can draw what we're about to paint um, with a pencil first or do you just wanna have at it, okay, with the paintbrush? Um, personally, I always sketch my stuff out with a pencil first, uh, but this whole, um, recording experience has been just a new experience. Been learning technology, been learning how to edit videos, and then now I'm like drawing on blank canvases and <laughs> just going with it right on video. So um, I'm gonna keep to true form. We're done with the big guy, so if you wanted to just go take it to the sink and wash it out with some soap and water and some more water um, instead of dirtying up your water cup, up to you. I'm just gonna let it set in there. Um, so I don't have to stop the video. Okay, the next brush that I'm gonna use is a medium pointy brush, just like this. And I'm gonna hold it just like I hold a pencil, right where the metal and the handle touch. That's where you have the most control. If you're trying to do more loose brush strokes or swirls, then you can hold it a little further back, okay? And now we're gonna be getting into our black paint. So. Um, my black has been sitting here a little while, so I'm going to get my brush wet and then rub that dampness into my black paint. And what that does is it re-loosens it up on my plate. So if you have plate paint that's been sitting on your plate for a little bit, that's what you can do. You just get a little bit of water, just like that, and then just kind of use that little bit of dampness and rub it into whatever you're dry paint is. Now, because I've been doing all that rubbing, I got to roll my brush or some people scrape. Make sure we get all the extra out. Now, um, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to turn this a little bit towards me, but you guys can still see. In fact, you can probably see better. So I know I want my B to be, to be pretty big about right here. Um, and then I want the kind so I'm, yeah, okay. Now I know I want the bee head to be in the middle. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch this out right now, guys, with my brush. Now, obviously, like I said, um, on a normal basis, well, on a real normal basis, I would um, already have this like drawn on here and sharpied and everything for you for myself and then it just takes the stress out of it but you know today I don't so that's okay um but we are gonna do like a curved line just like this okay 
then I am going to do a heart and then I'm going to extend my heart just a little bit on both sides and then I am going to do see I want it to go to about right here I think so I am going to curve down curve down so this one almost looks like a long skinny egg doesn't it okay then for my wings let's think about this um, They are going to kind of come out, come out. That's about even, right? We want our B to be B to be symmetrical, okay? And then, okay, they are working on the house next door still. They've been working on it for a while now, so I apologize if you hear banging in the background. I tried to wait to film, but I can't control my filming schedule around their work schedule, <laughs> right? Okay, um, now the, bee, the bee's wings are gonna come out and they're gonna come down and then I'm gonna give it a little wiggle and then kind of come back up, okay? So we know this is a diagonal, so we're gonna put a diagonal, that's about the same. And then we kind of went down, up, down, okay, so up, down, up, down, and around. So that's similar, not exactly, but that's okay. It, it comes from nature, and that's what we need to just remind ourselves, right? This comes from nature. It's not going to be exactly the same. We're going to have the two legs, and then they kind of come up and over, up and over, Yes, and then we've got one here, 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 here. Now again, this is just like a quick sketch. We're going to go back and make this look beautiful, okay? Okay, and I'm kind of feeling like the head probably should be a little bit bigger. Yes, I think so. And maybe some kind of little antennas, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and just fill the head in. with curved brush strokes. So this is like a C and this is like a backward C. There we go. And then I'm gonna make this little bit of an outline darker. Now, if you guys ever decide you want a custom canvas, I can either draw it out and you can paint it yourself. I just did two custom drawings on canvas for a teenage boy so he could do some painting at home. Um, or if you just like want a custom design done and painted and everything so you get to just hang it up and enjoy it or give it as a gift, that works too. Okay, um, now let's talk about, I need to fix this side of the head, don't I? There. Okay, now let's talk about the bee body. The bee body. Okay, um, let's add just some stylization here. Some 
something kind of like that. And something along those lines again. Okay, so we are gonna add another circle there, and if you can, you could fit in a few more there. Fill that in. Fill that in. Just like that, and then we can do the same thing. Make us another row. And again, if you feel better using your baby brush, that might be a good idea. There we go. Just like that. And we'll squeeze in another row. And I'll go back and clean these up a little bit. Um, you could always clean up all your lines with a Sharpie um, and even do some of the very small details with a Sharpie. That's always an option. There we go. Okay. And then Now I gotta start thinking, I may wanna go ahead and switch to my smaller brush. So I'm gonna let that one hang out in there. And I do though, real quick, I wanna kinda of touch up and cover up this black line just so it's not so obvious. Um, so I'm gonna kinda of blend some of that in. Like that. And of course you can always use your little fingers. Kind of help you out a little bit. As long as you don't wipe them on your clothes if you're wearing something you really like, right? Again, some my mustard yellow and white mixed together. There we go. So at least this way, it's not, I mean, I know it's still obvious, but it's not like super in your face. And now this has time, a little bit of time to dry before we start uh, working on the wings because I want to add some intricate designs to the wings. To clean your brush, you really want to smush and swirl on the bottom of the cup. I tell my, my boys at school the brush becomes a ballerina. So you smush and swirl like a little ballerina. Dry, dry, dry. Okay. And then we can start working on some fun details. So, for example, I might want to expand the little legs, right? There we go. like that and then we'll work on this little front leg bring it over some just like that thicken up this portion like we did on the other side and sharpen up that little leg by adding some extra paint on there Maybe if I raise that, oh, up just a little, that might help. There we go. Yay, so cute. Okay, remember, pause me or rewind me at any time. Okay, inside here, I might do kind of a traditional um, sort of honeycomb shape. A hexagon, six sides. And my brush is leaving, maybe put a circle in the middle. 
um, is leaving a little kind of wispy lines, but I think I like it uh, because um, it makes it not look so perfect, which none of my lines look perfect, so that is right on, right? There we go. Okay. So remember, everything I do on one side, I'm trying to replicate on the other side. And right now, I am just creating um, almost like Zentangles with my brush. So Zentangles are lines and designs that come together um, in an intricate fashion um, and really add a lot of movement within your artwork. Okay, so that is what I have inside of there right now. And then this can keep kind of growing and growing if I want it to, and they could eventually touch. So boop, 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 like that. Awesome. There we go. Okay, and then that just kind of filled in the whole thing, right? Maybe I want to add some lines inside there. Okay, and then I could, if I wanted to, I could fill in some of this with the black just to create um, um, some some blocked off chunks of color. So it's not just all so much yellow, I guess. We have more contrast in there, right? There we go. <clears throat> now, um, I might want to kind of clean this up just a little. We talked about that earlier. Just sort of clean up these brush strokes a little. There we go. And maybe we'll leave this one where they're not connected on the top. There we go. Okay. Nice. Okay. And now, if we work on these legs the same as we did the top ones, we would have kind of thicken these up a little in here. There's one little, I really should have done a little research on this and um, got some terminology for you guys, but I feel like the sections of the legs are called thorax but I'm not really sure so I hate to really say that and act like I know what I'm talking about my son used to do that all the time when he was little he would say something and I would kind of process it a minute and think about it and be like really is that really how it is? is that really how it is is that really how it's supposed to be and uh and then it would um hit me that I he was probably making it up so I would ask him is that how it is or is that how you think it should be? <laughs> so, I don't really know, guys, but that's just what I'm thinking I remember from science class. There we go. Okay. And then go ahead and thicken these up just a smidge right up here by the body. And then... I am going to add a little extra design 
on this one. Oop. There we go. They are going to town on that house next to me. Oh well, and my doggy doesn't like it. So then you also hear him barking. So I'm just making little circles with my paintbrush that are kind of getting filled in as we go. There we go. And make another thicker spot on there like that. And kind of thicken these up. Like that. So circle, 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 and then clean that up. Awesome. Oh my gosh, this is looking kind of fun. Kind of proud of myself here a little bit. Okay, now, um, I've been trying to think about like how I want to do these wings. And part of me kind of wants to pull in um, some flowers on the wings that like my, my, uh, style roses that I do. But then part of me is like, what if this baby's a boy? What if this baby's a boy and there's roses on the bee's wings? I mean, does that matter? Does it matter? I don't know. I don't know if it matters. Um, hmm. But then again, this kind of has a little bit of a floral design in the middle too. So, we could um, attempt to do, oops, man, my board just moved on me again. Um, kind of like do maybe some diamonds, maybe. And then I have to, I don't want to go too far before I work on this other side over here too. Okay. So, we do some diamonds in here. Some more paint on my brow. I'm about to have to get some more black out of the container here. Okay, something like that. Not exact, but it's close. Right, we'll clean up, kind of clean up that edge right there, like that. Okay, then kind of clean that up, add a little curve. So I'm adding more black onto my outline because it was really broken and um, it had blended with my wet yellow so it looked really light in these places. So I'm just going to kind of go back and crisp that up a little bit. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I must have had black on my hand. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of napkin, wrap it around my finger, and then rub, 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 rub that off right there. There. Gone. Okay. Now I am going to do a circle and then I'm going to do kind of some wavy lines. And so it sort of looks flowery, but maybe not completely, or maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe it does look completely flowery.
Then I go in this little gap in between and I do the same thing. So they kind of look like um, funky threes, right? Let me show you up close. So you can see, there we go. And then we'll do another one right here, sort of attached. And right here, oh, I keep putting my hands in that, guys. Holy moly. So lesson learned, keep your hand off the canvas, right? Keep your hand up in the air when you're painting so that way you don't drag your finger through it. Okay. Now I've got to do a little yellow touch up there. Okay. So, little funky three. All right, now if I do another one like right here, what's that gonna look like? Something like that. There we go. So we did it about right here on the other side. Like that. There we go. And then we do, oh, maybe another one right here. Like that. And then in between, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this, my little black container, cause I'm running so low on my plate. There we go. And to disguise what's going on over here, I should probably put some, well, see maybe put one right here as well kind of disguise my my little attempt to correct my black lines right there we go okay and then we just have some empty gaps in between so all I really have to do is kind of pick which one I want to make a little bit bigger like that and then it'll fill in those gaps and then I could fill in right there and fill in right here. There we go. And then right here. Awesome. And there and there. And there, and there, and something needs to go right here because that was a kind of a gap there. Okay, now just to add a little stylized look, what if we paint in some of these little diamonds? that are over here, like that. So we did the ones on the top and leave that row, do this row. Okay, and then we could kind of add some extra little curve lines. So really, um, like I'm trying to just darken up the center. I'll just fill them all the way in. Darken up the centers of my flowers just to add a little bit more contrast in there. 
There we go. We go and there and there. Okay. And do we need to maybe kind of touch up these antennas? Um, and I feel like maybe because it's so much dark at the top and then we don't have any dark at the bottom, maybe I could fill in this whole chunk with black and then go ahead and thicken this up just a little just so we balance all that black because we have so much black at the top and then so much black at the bottom There we go. Okay, now, yay. Okay, so now, remember this is B, and then we talked about having the word kind in there. Now, of course, you don't have to, or be patient, or be gentle, or be loving, or, so you could totally twist this up how you want to, right? totally twist it up how you want to. I know that kind is four letters. Okay, so I am just going to kind of sketch my letters out. I don't always love to paint letters because um, uh, I don't know. It's so easy to mess them up, I guess. Sometimes I'd rather just use a um, paint pen if I can. Throw a little a little heart dot right there. And I'm going to get my medium pointy brush back out. Don't have to clean it all the way because I am still going to be using black. And then thicken this up a little. There we go. Whoa! That was so close. I just lost control of the brush and somehow did not mark the paper. go. And mark the in. And one thing to think about when you're doing letters is trying to keep the bottom even and then the top even. So my D does go higher than my K, so maybe my K needs to come up just a little bit more. Kind of balance that out just a little bit. go. And I really sort of smushed my brush down on that part of the D, the left part of the D. Okay, I'm being so quiet. I'm sorry, guys. I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating so hard. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but 
why am I even thinking that way? Because it can be fixed, right? We wrap our napkin up in our finger, dip it in our water, rub it right off. It's gone. It's fixed. Or we turn it into something else. So I don't even know why I'm stressing so much. Um, I think because it's detail and I'm just trying to be so careful. Um, one thing that I do sometimes is rest my little pinky on this on the canvas so it's kind of like a stilt to steady my hand. Um, sometimes that does help. Something to think about. There we go. Okay, now my letters aren't exactly balanced but they're pretty close. I'm gonna clean my brush and dry my brush because every time you wash it you want to dry it and I'm going to get into some fresh white the white on my plate is well I guess I have a little bit on here I can use okay and then maybe I want to add some little pops of white kind of here and there on my B just to add like a little like a little highlight, like a little contrast, right? So it's just not all um, black and yellow. And so you kind of want to think about where your contrast is going to be. Like right now I'm doing it across the tops of each section and it's a quick little sweep as if like there was a light shining down where it would hit, right? Where it would shine. There we go. And probably would have a little bit because these little legs are so thick. There we go. And um, maybe just a little there, maybe a little on that curve, maybe a little on the wing. So if there's not a top, you could always pick a side, like you could pick the left side of something to follow the curve if you wanted to, if there's not a top, or you can even do like the top and the left side like that. Ta-da! Love it. Okay. And then I would do the same thing on my kind and just add little pops of white in places. Like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's really cute. Okay, so that I think is really sweet and I think that she'll like it and I think it goes with the family theme and if she didn't want to hang it in the nursery, it could just be a gift for somewhere else in her home or out with the bees, <laughs> I don't know. But I think it's really fun, and this is definitely something that my students and I talk about um, at the studio and at um, school all the time is being kind and how when you portray kindness and you put it out there in your environment, um, whether it be in your home or your school or out in the community, in some way or another, it does come back to you somehow, right? So. Be kind, right? Just change that whole mindset and be kind. Sometimes it's really hard, but I know you can do it. This, my friends, was so much fun. And I absolutely loved getting to experiment and try things out with you. And I hope that you also enjoyed the process. And I'm trying to get the whole thing in there. Come on. And... Of course, I cannot wait 
to paint with you again, right? You already knew I was going to say that. I cannot wait to paint with you again. Please like, subscribe, share, um, leave me comments. I want to see your pictures. Was it hard? Was it easy? Did I do a good job teaching? So talk to me guys and um, have a super great day and I can't wait to do art with you again, of course.